four more welcome to this week's Wellbeing at Home live event. Uh, a big virtual hug to our regular attendees. It's nice to see you all. It's always beautiful to see your names and faces. And also a special welcome to those of you joining us for the first time. I do hope you enjoy our event today and you'll be back to join us for more in the future. So um, yeah, I hope you enjoy it. And today's a, a, a lovely subject, close to my heart today's subject. So um, a couple of weeks ago, we held a focus group and we had, uh, it was very informative for us. And one thing we realized was that um, most people don't know how to get the most out of the community website with regard to kind of accessing past uh, recordings and resources and groups and stuff like that. So um, I am going to start today because I always say I'm going to do it at the end and then we never get to it. I'm going to start today to do a quick share on how we use the site so that you can um, have a look. Those of you who know already, super users, please bear with me. Um, and uh, I will just, sh just share my screen. So just bear with me a sec. And, uh, to, to this, okay. So let's share. And now I can't share, I can't believe it. <laughs> Sorry, bear with me a sec. Um, there is all the screen. Okay, here we go. Right, okay. Thank you for that. Zoom did an upgrade and I'm still trying to work through the upgrade. So this is the home page. When you log in to the community site, this is the home page that you get. Um, the best way to access the pre, well, actually you can access previous recordings um, in many different ways. You can do it through the subjects here. So for example, um, we'll look at women's health as an example. And you'll see as you scroll down, there, is, uh, there are some recordings of um, sessions uh, that we've done before on women's health. So there you can see, we have an Ayurvedic perspective. We have Dr. Stephanie Goodwin there. So that's just uh, one example. Um, another way you can access and see um, the, the event for the upcoming week is if you click here in the middle, the events, uh, here's the event so you'll see today's event here and another way you can catch up on last week's event if you missed it is you just see this back arrow here you click back and um, it shows you all the previous events so last week we had an event with Marina which was very interesting um, <clears throat> about easing out of lockdown and anxiety so you can click on that um, and watch the recording there. So it's all, so it's just different ways to access the events. The other thing you can do here is the wellbeing forum. So I've shared this in the past, but this wellbeing forum, um, this feed here is specific to you. So um, for example, if you're part of a group, like a private group, for example, and you're posting something in that, and you see it appear on your feed, don't worry because not everyone's gonna see that feed. That feed is just your feed. So only the people in that group will see the feed. And so now I'll move over to groups just to let you know what I'm talking about here. So we have lots of different groups. Some of them are private groups for the courses that we run. So for example, here we have an improve your sleep. Uh, um, we did a course on that. So we've got a private group there. So you can't enter that unless you, you bought the course. Um, but this one here, for example, emotional mental well-being is public. The yoga one's public. And we, we, you know, we're going to be adding more as we go along. But for example, if I go into the emotional mental well-being one, um, you know, Pamela posted something in this. Um, and that will appear on if, you know, I don't know if Pamela's on today. 
but that would appear on Pamela's feed while she's looking down here. Um, because I'm also in that, um, in that, oh look, here's something from Sheena that she posted. Uh, so there is a main forum. So if you want to put something in the main forum, the forum is there for you to share and ask questions or anything that you want there. So if you want to put something in the main forum, you can do so. Um, and, and you will see and everyone will see. But if, you, if you're putting something in a group, don't worry, it's not going to appear to, for everybody. So um, the other thing I just wanted to show you, uh, which is interesting, is um, email invites. So if you click on your little uh, icon here, your, um, your profile, there's, there's, you can have messages, you can send each other messages or stuff like that but here's an email invite so if you want to invite any friends to come along to any events or share anything you can do that there so you just click uh, send invites and you put your recipient's name in and then you send it off it's a really quick and easy way and then they'll get an invite to join the community so okay I'll stop sharing now but I've decided to do this quick thing every week or two so that um people can know how it works, because I know it's a little bit confusing unless someone shows you how to, how to work it. So, okay, um, I'm gonna start off today's uh, session. Okay. If everyone wouldn't mind just um, muting, please. That would be amazing. Uh, that will be good so that we can have the, uh, the speaker view it doesn't pop up then. So, uh, okay, so moving to other happenings just before we start with uh, the lovely Laura, uh, we finally received clarity that uh, we can actually visit Portugal because last week there was a little bit of confusion. Our government said we could go without quarantining but we weren't sure if the Portuguese would allow us in. Um, but now we know that they will allow us in. Um, and we sent out a newsletter with more information about that yesterday and then some great options for you to visit um, in Portugal. So, because uh, it's on the green list. If you're not ready to travel, but want a wellbeing break, then uh, do contact us about our, our retreats in the UK and that, you know, we've, we've taken quite a few bookings for those this week now that the uh, UK hotels have also opened up from the 17th of May, so from Monday um, onwards. So. Uh, okay, so let's start today's event, and I just want to introduce the lovely Laura. Laura, where are you? Say hi. Oh, sorry, hello. Hi. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, thank you so much for joining us today, Laura. And I was just chatting with Laura before we came on. Um, aromatherapy and essential oils are very close to my heart. They're my secret passion. Um, and I've been really into them for the last God knows how many years. I've got my own collection. And I was saying to Laura, I've actually stopped personally buying um, any brands of anything, any skincare or anything. And I just even um, shower gels or body oils. I just mix my own. Um, because I'm, I've just become a little bit obsessed with it <laughs> and I experiment and I use different blends and stuff like that and I and I played with them I was telling Laura I played with them a few years back for my team for Christmas I met I made them all their own their own blend um, which I did like just intuitively and most of them unless they were just being really polite they could have been really polite I don't know really but they said they all said they loved them and I got so much joy from doing that so it's my kind of special passion and I was so excited when I met Laura um, because she's very she's a very special lady um, but also she's got lots and lots of experience and, and information about um, essential oils. so welcome it's so lovely to have you here hey, thank you oh, really nice to see you so let's start off Laura um and talk a little bit about you. Now, you, you describe yourself as a vintage aromatherapist. That really made me laugh when I saw that. <laughs> you put that in your bio. Oh, um, <laughs> so, um, so, yeah. Uh, what does that mean, a vintage aromatherapist? Well, it means that I, I qualified 
donkeys years ago, and just to use that expression probably shows my age. I think I qualified in about 1993 or something like that. And I've kind of been rocking around the older aromatherapy circuit since then, really. So <laughs> I love that rocking around the aromatherapy circuit. I love it. Well, you're very ahead of your day because it was very niche in those days, wasn't it? Aromatherapy. Yeah, it was certainly less common than it is, is now, for sure. Um, I, I qualified as a beauty therapist um, from college and I wanted to go more the therapeutic route rather than the waxing and the nails and um, aromatherapy was the route I took and I think at the time um, there was probably only about eight of us on the course um, you know and, and it was kind of run once a year so it was a little bit more unusual than perhaps it is now yeah wow and it took you quite a while to finish that course isn't it because you were working at the same time you said yeah, and yeah, so you were very I, dedicated to make that happen I know especially at, I must have only been about 19 or 20 I don't know but wow I know and uh, uh, yeah it took about 18 months I think because you have to do a load of case studies as well so I had to do treatments on people and measure their progress and monitor it and submit it and all the rest of it so it was it was intense yeah it really was yeah that is amazing and then you went on because we were chatting about this too about you went on to work for a brand uh, a number of brands who were very very big on aromatherapy and oils essential oils and I would say probably the, the best brands in this area um, I mean certainly going back Back from you know those days uh, you went to work for Declio right because Declio I was telling you was one of the first they introduced me to essential oils all those years ago I used to use them and think oh my god these these smells are amazing and they smelled like pure they didn't smell chemical exactly. because I really hated those chemical smells you know yeah. uh, but you worked for them didn't you you I started did. off with them yeah it was the first brand I trained in when I was a beauty therapist in in Midhurst and I thought I want to work for them. I don't want to work with them. I want to work for them. And just sort of wrote to them. And they they moved me from West Sussex up to to London. And I worked in Harrods. And I worked in um, all sorts of areas for them as an area rep and as a regional manager, on and off probably for about fifteen years in the end. And ended up looking after their kind of hospitality spa division for the UK. So all of the hotels and health hydros, as they used to be called in that in those days, um, that stocked Beckley or I. Would would um, look after the sort of commercial side the business development side of it so. wow and uh, yeah I mean they they, they are they are a, and were an amazing brand I think they're you know in terms of that but really really cool brand um, and then you went on from there and who did you work for after that well there's you been a few <laughs> yeah, but, but you, sorry go sorry on. carry on well, the thread really with aromatherapy is um, <clears throat> I've worked for Aromatherapy Associates looking after Europe, um, Middle East and Africa for, for them. That's a beautiful brand as well. <clears throat> and I've also more recently worked for Ela Spa, another British brand that has a lot of aromatherapy within its philosophy, although that's more of a Ayurvedic company. It still uses very high, high vibrational essential oils for skincare, but also for emotional support, which is definitely where I am erring towards now as I get older, um, that kind of support that it can give you to the ups and downs of life, basically. Wow, amazing. When you say high, vi high vibrational oils, what do you mean? Well, you can extract an essential oil harshly, um, or you can extract it gently and retain a lot of its uh, power and essential oils will all radiate at a different or uh, a frequency. So one of the highest vibration of essential oils is rose. It has a really high vibration, as does neroli. All the expensive ones, as you do. Yeah, <laughs> these are my favourites. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Bankrupting um, ones. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And, and by introducing a higher vibrational essential oil into your body and into your aura, um, can change your vibration. It can just lift it a little bit as well. So it's it's um it's more on the energetic medicine side of things. Okay. Physicality. Okay. But you were saying like how they extract them, so they can extract because I know Ela and uh, they extract them very carefully don't they and they're very they're very ethical yeah with very the farmers ethical. that they use and everything yeah and or, organic so, essential oils is maybe a consideration for a lot of people to to know that um they're free from uh, artificial growth uh, stimulants and and all the rest of it um, and in the example of rose the classic one is if you need to 
ideally distill it as close to the time as you pick those rose petals. So if you've got a still or a distillery that's 500 miles down the road in a commercial site, all the time that those rose petals are jogging down the road to the distillery to get distilled, they're losing their vitality, they're, they're losing their vibration. So um, many companies will tell you that they distill on site where they can, so from field to, to still basically, and then into the little bottles of oil for you to use. That's very interesting. So the quicker. And so um, what, you know, what's your view on organic versus non-organic? I think that, yeah, I think if you if you can go for organic and they're, they're generally more expensive, that is my preference, frankly. But that's only really been since sort of my understanding of, of what goes on in probably the last eight to 10 years. So prior to that, Organic to me didn't mean especially very much. So um, I, I can't knock what we had before. What, what I will say I think is really important is some of the essential oils now that are appearing on the uh, endangered list where they're just being over um, uh, farmed and, and, and used too much and, and they have to have a body to step in and protect them. Spikenard or Datamancy is one of those at the moment where it's just endangered and we need to stop uh, using it for a while to allow it to recover so that's really interesting interesting that really is yeah um so throughout your career you um you know you worked for these you know these great brands and you were very involved with with them and you know um uh they were big into essential oils and aromatherapy and then you went uh you, you had a cancer diagnosis, right? Um, and you left ELA and then you went to work for a brand called Made for Life. Mm. And um, I just want to touch on this because I think it's really important. Um, you helped develop treatments for cancer patients because I think this is a really difficult one. There's so many people who have cancer diagnosis who, can't, who, who just cannot go and have any treatments because uh, they, they're, they're told they can't or they're scared of, of having treatments. Um, but talk to us a little bit about that and what you did at Made for Life. Well, I, I was working um, on, a, on a conference in Spain and I happened, they bus you off to have a, an event in the evening, don't they, at these events. And I was sitting on the bus next to a lady called Amanda Winwood. And um, I said, hello, what do you do? And she said, oh, I own an organic skincare company in Cornwall. And I also have a charity that um, supports people going through cancer. And about 18 months prior to meeting Amanda, as you say, I'd had my own, <clears throat> excuse me, diagnosis of cervical cancer. So we immediately had a connection. And one of the things Amanda said was, um, we support people beyond the diagnosis. So even when they're in recovery, and I know that I had physically recovered, pretty easily, quite frankly, from the couple of operations that I had. But there was something emotional. There was a little lag, uh, a little bit of trauma there that maybe was still troubling the back of my mind. And we had this really deep conversation about it. And she said something which I was well aware of, which is 98% of spas at that time would turn you away if you turned up and ticked that you'd had cancer in the last five years on their intake form, as you say. And typically the spa would say, oh, I'm really sorry, I can't do your facial or your massage today, but I can offer you a manicure. So firstly, that's not what you want uh, because you'd booked a, you know, a body massage. And secondly, a manicure is probably higher risk than a body massage. But in our industry, we were scared. We were scared that, that massage would spread cancer because when you have a massage, obviously naturally you stimulate lymph and you stimulate blood. And you can imagine, oh, am I pushing the cancer? Am I moving it around? There's absolutely no evidence that massage can spread, spread cancer, metastasize cancer. It's a biological function that somebody else's hands on your body is not going to have an action on. And this is, you know, much more widespread now and more understood. But at the time, I was going around with a doctor's letter in my bag that I'd paid 20 quid for <laughs> to say it's safe for Laura to have any holistic treatments, reflexology, massage, whatever, um, just to cover their insurance. So 
when Amanda was talking about this and saying, you know, I've set up a training company for this. I've got a great lead trainer in Mark. We, we just need to get it out there. I thought I'm going to join you. And I did. And I joined as a sort of sales and marketing consultant. And Amanda, Mark and I spent the best part probably of two years leaping around the UK, training loads of therapists from Centre Parks to Champneys to um, Marriott Hotels, Nuffield Health and loads of holistic therapists in between um, so that they rather than say, sorry, I can't treat you because you happen to be living with cancer. Um, they can welcome you with open arms and actually give you a treatment that you really want and is really useful during a trial. Mm, amazing work that you did there. I mean, so worthwhile. You know, it still happens. I had a friend call me last week crying her eyes out because she tried to go and have a facial mm. and they wouldn't let her. And she's, you know, she has, she's uh, a cancer patient, but it's just, it, you know, there's still a lot of work to do, but a lot of, you know, there has been a, a lot of work already done, th thanks to people like you. So we're getting there slowly, but, you know, so yeah. many women, that, you know, have had cancer or will mm. get cancer, unfortunately. So it's something that we need to deal with, because, as you say, and I think this is what I'd like to move on to now, like the emotional aspect of that and how um, the essential oils can help you. You know, I think... Um, how do, I mean, I think this kind of leads on nicely to my next question. How do you use oils right now? Right now? <laughs> yeah, I'm, or just generally, yeah. How do you use oils? Yeah, yeah essentially, um, in the bath is probably my go-to. I love the water element and the soothing aspect of that. So I, I, I do have a bath at least once a day, and usually in the morning, curiously. Um, I love that. Um, but I use them a lot on the go, and certainly recently, um, I've got these little things that you can get off Amazon, these sniffy sticks that I call them um, inhalers, essentially, a bit like the VIX inhaler. So they give you the components to make your own inhaler. So I just drop a couple of essential oils onto the insert, pop it in, pop the lid on. They give you a little sticker so you can write on what you've got, what you've, written, what you've put in there, rather. Um, and then you can just inhale that discreetly throughout the day. I've got them in my pocket, in my desk, in my car, in my handbag. Um, and they're just a, a quick fix because the thing with essential oil use is that's the fastest way you can get them to work is to inhale them. So whether that's through a steam diffuser or through an inhaler or even just a, um, a tissue or these perfume strips that you can get, you can waft around that will affect you really, really quickly. Massage, rollables, that kind of thing will take a little bit longer, maybe 10 minutes, um, but that will have a, an effect. And in the bath, again, if you can stay in for about 20 minutes, that would be good. So, so yeah, I'd say mostly the inhalers um, and, and baths. Um, I've also been using salt baths. The salt is so restorative, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So you can get um, just the magnesium flakes or the Epsom salts. And I tend to just use an old um, supplement bottle here and I've got the salt in it. And you blend your aromatherapy oil or your essential oil in base oil first and then add it to the salt. I can smell that. It's just incredible. That's then, amazing. I love that. I didn't know. I, I, that's a new trick for me. Thank you. Beautiful. It goes a bit um, sort of, not sludgy, that doesn't sound very nice, but it goes a bit yeah. sort of viscous. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it, it tends to cling then to your body and the salt will, will dissolve in the, in the bath and remineralize you and do all, of, all the good stuff. I found it really good for pain relief. Um, but, but probably the best thing that I love to do is an oat bath. Um, I don't know if you've ever tried that, but um, you can get um, these little organza bags or probably a little muslin cloth might be a more uh, a better way to, to, to use it. And just put a couple of handfuls of um, oats, porridge oats, literally the stuff that you eat, and then you can add your oil to it. So you can add um, maybe three drops. Of, I've got pettigrain here. Um, which is one of my obsessions. And then you can put that in the bath like that. I haven't got a bath here to show you. I've just got a, a bowl of water. Um, and can you see how it's just starting to... Oh, yeah, it's getting cloudy. I, 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 I didn't know. I've never used an oat bath. That's amazing. What do the oats do? The oats are good for your skin, are they? 
oats are incredible for your skin and in actual fact i think the eczema society recommend it for really dry irritated you know compromised skin and the more you just gently squeeze it the richer and richer that milk comes and i i end up just sort of massaging it on my le lower legs my lower legs get really um, and it just takes away any irritation. It's very, very softening, very, very soothing. Um, so I tend to do that maybe about once a week, just as a, um, yeah. a luxury thing, quite honestly. It looks like it looks like Cleopatra's bath. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's very decadent, isn't it? It looks like a milk bath. It's amazing. Um, yeah. I've just got a couple of questions here. I, I'll take as we go along. Yeah. Um, Lisa ask Lisa has cats and she's heard that their top essential oils are toxic to cats do you know anything about that I do a bit um, there's some some really good specialists out there that know know a lot about this um, and obviously cats are tiny in comparison to us so the, the thing to do if you want to diffuse essential oils at home near your pets is leave a door open and don't do it consistently so maybe have it on for an hour and then blow it out and make sure your pet can get out. And it's the same for dogs as well. Um, they're, they're hypersensitive to smell. If they don't like something, they're gonna go, they're gonna leave. So just make sure that they can. Sure. Okay, so they can they can leave the room, okay. Mm. Claudia, hello, Claudia. Um, Claudia asks, uh, what is a recommended brand to purchase Rose Essential? Now, Rose is one of my favorites, but it's so expensive, the pure, 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 right? Um, I mean, and so, I mean, I remember my mum once went to Bulgaria and bought me this tiny little vial. It was like this big. And I think it cost her a fortune. And I would, I would limit like one. I mean, it's very potent though, isn't it? Like one drop. Yeah. But tell us, yeah, it costs like several hundred pounds for us. For well, us. you know, for, for two mil, if you think, uh, obviously a teaspoon is five mil, isn't it? So for, mm -hmm. for two mil, of pure rose essential oil, you're talking probably about 350 pounds. It is extortionate just because the amount of rose petals that you have to use to get that quantity of essential oils. So it's extraordinarily, almost prohibitively expensive. Mm -hmm. you, you can get it in a, an absolute, which isn't technically an essential oil. And that's one of the more or, or less gentle ways to get the essential oil from the plant so so it, the, the one that you really want is rot um, rotto no a, a rose otto rose otto yeah <laughs> rose Cena. um and and actually to, to answer claudia's question there um if that is prohibitively expensive which it would be for most people you you can look at the big companies that do offer rose pure rose essential oil as part of their um their their product so you're looking at the declayors the s bars um uh, ela do an amazing one made for life um probably aromatherapy associates from memory because they have the buying power obviously to to, to buy it um, and they blend them do they they they're with a the base oil so you buy them with the base oil yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. but so the the little ones that you buy that say the five mil ones the absolute. So you're saying keep away from absolute. No, 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 not at all. Um, it's just that there is a there is a difference. They chemically take out the essential oil with an absolute. Nice. Um, it's actually used in high class perfumery. Uh, the absolute more than the rose otto in actual fact because it it smells better. Frankly, it smells really beautifully rosy, like the whole Chanel thing. They will likely use an absolute. Um, but the, the Rose Damascena Otto contains the vibrational essence that I was talking about. It contains more of the whole of that essential oil and it's just been gently distilled with steam. And that, that for me personally is, is the therapeutic quantity, quality, sorry, that, that I'd be after. And that has, Rose has a great affinity with the skin generally and with the heart chakra. Um, and the heart chakra is, 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 is um, associated with skin as well. So for me, if I'm using rose essential oil on my skin, I always put it on my heart chakra first. Um, firstly, because as a therapist, I've been told that your face starts at your, at your bust anyway, so you should always treat from, from your boobs upwards. Um, but secondly, your thymus is there as well. And so on a physical level, just, just touching and connecting with the thymus gland, which when you're a child is huge and so important as part of your immunity and it, it shrinks with age and it gets taken over by fat and all the rest of it. 
but more, more, more research is going into the thymus gland and how it can help you um, as you grow older with immunity and everything. So just a gentle stimulation as you apply your rose for me is, is a beautiful thing. Beautiful. Everybody do that now. I'm doing it. It feels amazing. <laughs> I just try what, it. Put your hands on your thymus and just try it. It's amazing. Yeah, feels really comforting. And you've got little heart chakras on your on the palms of your hands. So if you can put your palms of your hands on your heart chakra, that's a, that's a great connection. That's like an infinity connection there that you've got going on. Oh, your... it's gorgeous. It feels really lovely. And I can imagine with a bit of rose on there, amazing. That's Love that. And that's the other very thing. cool. Um, so with your thymus and immunity as well so that's good for your immunity so they've got research around that now starting to look at look at that for sure yeah um, the other thing i'm obsessed with stella is ear massage at the moment ear massage so ear massage oh yeah tell us about the ear massage yeah you mentioned that the other day do it a lot in spa anyway um holistically speaking your ear represents your inner child so it's all about lovely joy and innocence and all the rest of it um but, and you've also got a very important acupressure point uh, about a third of the way on the inside of your ear here, the Shen Men, which is the um, heavenly gateway. That doesn't look very attractive to say, <laughs> sorry. Okay, we're all doing it, we're all doing it, it's okay. Yeah, go. That's a great anti-anxiety point. And if you just, just stimulate it, and also then if you want to pull your ears up like Spock, just keep them close to your head, but pull them up. I find that really just opens the auric channel there and helps you hear better. Chemo Releases therapy. your jaw a little bit as well, doesn't it? Amazingly. And then do the opposite. So just hold your lobes and pull gently downwards. And again, that just releases the tension. And talking about jaw tension, articulation point there, you can, you can hold so much tension. Yeah, yeah right there so just small circ yeah. i know small circular motions can just help to release that tension and then there are hundreds of key lymph nodes at the front of your ear and behind so, and lymph loves warmth so just some beautiful stroking or circulations at the front of your ear or my favorite one is to scissor so you press upwards in the front of the ear and behind and then just smooth downwards. We do that a lot in spa, just to gently oh, warm nice. the nodes. Yeah. Um, you may find a lot of people hold a lot of tension at the back of the occiput there as well, mm -hmm. on the occipital ridge. So just pressure points on that bony part as well. So if we have some oils on your fingers and while you're doing this. Beautiful. That is yeah. beautiful. Oh yes, I like all that. We're all gonna fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful. Just, no, it's beautiful. It's so good. Oh, wow. also, you've got your main trigeminal facial nerve that comes from your ear all across across here as well. And, and so that will encourage fresh oxygen, nutrients, vitamins, minerals into the complexion so that you look brighter, yeah. fresher, more youthful, all of that. It's like a quick fix, just a quick matter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. So um, I knew I'd have loads, we'd have loads of questions with the subject today. We've got loads of questions. Oh. Um, Kathleen asks, could we have a ratio of the mixes of oils to base oil to salt, oh, please? Yeah. But course. even like with your salt bath and stuff like that, with, uh, with your tub, like you showed us. Yeah, of course. Um, so the key is really the simplest way to remember it is if, for example, you have 10 mil of, of base oil. And by base oil, I mean like sweet almond oil, coconut oil, that type of thing. Um, it's half the amount in drops of essential oil. So 10 mil, you drop in five essential oil drops. 20 mil, you drop in 10. That's drops, not mil drops. Drop, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, what, so, so for five, so for five, so for ten mil of the base oil, the carrier oil, which could be al almonds, coconut, uh, sesame, whatever. Yeah. Uh, you you put in five drops. Exactly that. So if I show you here, um, just quickly. So I've got a little measuring jug. You can use your measuring spoons if you want to. Um, but I've got this, this ancient thing. Um, so I've got 20 mils of base oil in there. And then I would do maybe 10 petty grains. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
eight, let's do eight, because I've got 20 mils. And that leaves me two, two mils of maybe another one. Let's go with frankincense. So in total, I've got 10 mils. But you say 10 mils, is that drops? There's a drop oh, of mil. I keep saying drop. wrong thing, drops. Drops, sorry. okay, drops, that's fine, yeah. Drops per mil, yeah. yeah. And yeah. Kathleen, I would just say do a little bit of trial and error as well. You know, play with it, because I've played with it a lot, and sometimes I don't put enough, and sometimes I put too much. And then you'll find what's right for you, but this is a really good guide. Thank you, Laura, Definitely. for starting. I would say take that down again if you're using face. So for five mils, I just put a couple of drops of essential yeah. oils in. And that makes sense because you're you, the minute you open your essential oil, think, blimey, that's strong. And they are. They're incredibly yeah. powerful. So one or two drops for the face is more than enough. Yeah. Yeah. I've got to share with everybody my face oil, my special face oil, because I've stopped buying um, <laughs> stuff because uh, I love it. I love it to death. So um, I use jojoba. I use a yeah. mixture of jojoba oil with vitamin E oil and um uh raspberry seed oil which gives you some coverage for sun not you know just a little bit yeah, yeah. and um and then i just put a couple of drops of whatever jasmine or mm. if i have um rose then rose and it's a beautiful face oil to put on before you go to bed at night so i'm just sharing that with everyone because if you want to make that and your own alchemist it's beautiful it's a really <laughs> lovely uh, blend so I thought I would just share that okay more questions um Diane has extremely sensitive skin she's worried about products on her skin um she's she's asked you know she's just asked for a good brand basically to start her journey with um because she's been given she's been, she's got a boots lavender she's got homassi i've never heard of that essential oil but i think there's so many on the market like you know where can you start off with that's a good mid-range um in dental terms brand? Of skincare brand rather than pure essential no, no, oils i think and the and the uh the, yeah oils. oils oils and base oils yeah, um, I would always personally go for oils that um, commit to the Aromatherapy Trade Council, just as a professional aromatherapist, that's important to me. Um, and some of the commercial uh, brands that you'll have heard of are Tisserand that, that commit to that. Um, they're very, very, very good. Neil's Yard are excellent and they do a good quality of uh, organic essential oils as well. Um, Denise Brown is a good one for some of the more unusual essential oils. I'm mildly obsessed with yuzu at the moment, which is a citrus uh, from Japan, and it smells like lemon sherbet. So it's so bright and sunny and so uplifting. It makes your mouth literally water. It's such a superstar. So um, I get that from Denise Brown, um, Shirley Price, Materia Aromatica, um, yeah, I, I can I can prepare a list. We can put something on the forum. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then uh, we yeah, let's put something on the forum afterwards. In terms of um, oils as well, Stella, there's a great little uh, not little company called the uh, soap. Sorry, the soap kitchen, which offer all sorts of base oils and essential oils and all the things you were talking about, the, the sort of um, emulsifiers and you can make soap on there and candles and all sorts of stuff to get making your own your own products which is great fun yeah brilliant thank you oh okay so Pam lovely Pam's got a question here because Pam lost her sense of smell ah because uh, she had a head trauma yes and she's wondering would it be possible to regain some sense with smell training I don't know if you know this because it's quite specialist, but with lemon, rose, eucalyptus and clove recommended. Have you heard of this? Yes, I have heard of this. And there are people that are um, looking into this and helping. It, it came up, especially with COVID, because obviously people are, are losing sense of smell with COVID. So on the professional aromatherapy forums that I'm on, it's come up recently because of that. But so the answer is I don't know, and I think they're still working on it, but it, it seems positive that there can be some, some retraining. But what we do know is that if you aren't able to smell the essential oils, that they still work therapeutically, they still have a physiological action on your body. 
Um, that's as much as I know for sure about it, but um, I can certainly dig around and, and, and find those trials and find maybe the people that are looking more into rehabilitation for sense of smell loss and let you know. Um, thank you. Thank you, Laura. Um, yeah, the, Pam, worth trying. Um, in terms of the brands and which ones to buy, uh, Laura's already covered the main ones. I think you're, you're safe to get those. Uh, Kathleen asks, are doTERRA oils worth the money? I buy doTERRA. Some are not, I don't exclusively buy doTERRA, but I do buy some doTERRA because they're very, very high quality, right? What's your view on doTERRA? Um, I don't know is the answer. I, I've not used them is the honest answer. Um, I do know that they call um, their essentials therapeutic grade, but in actual fact, that's a that's a thing that, that they've, made themselves it's, there yeah. is no therapeutic grade in terms of everybody else yeah uh, there's certain things you can check quality of a chromatograph will tell you what percentage of essential oil has got certain terpenes and monoterpenes and all the rest of it um which is interesting but um as far as i know they're they're, they're great quality but i do, i'm not sure why they're they're very very expensive I, i'd have to look at that yeah and i think they're not you know i think when you compare them to some of the really I think you meant which were the other brands you mentioned apart from Nils Yars and Tisseron, there was another one. Um uh, Materia Rome. Aromatica. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's an English brand, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think they're similar prices to doTERRA because I've looked at them both. So, yeah. you know, they're not all super pricey. Uh, but if you want to get like doTERRA, they're not all super expensive. But if you do want to get um a rose, for example, pure rose, you are looking at some. <laughs> <laughs> which I haven't put myself to do yet. No. <laughs> um, okay, so um, Odile, yes, which would you recommend for sleep? So let's talk about, that leads us on nicely uh, to your, um, you know, how you use, what you use them for. So for emotional purposes, for sleep, maybe we can talk oh. a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, well, lavender is the one everybody goes to. I'm, I'm not a massive fan of lavender. I'd rather have pettigrain, which has very similar properties, but has a, a, a more favorable aroma to me. Um, but for sleep, without a doubt, hands down, it's vetiver for me, which is the most, it's a, it's a grass from India and it's the most earthy smelling essential oil you can ever imagine. It really just smells like mother earth as if the rain has, has just pounded the hot soil. Um, so it's quite unusual. It's very um, unisex as well, um, which is useful. It's incredibly grounding. And I found certainly with my second diagnosis, so I've had a recurrence of this wretched cancer. Um, I find that getting to sleep with such a busy mind is, is difficult um, sometimes. And just using a little bit of vetiver on a tissue before bed, or you can use it in the bath or diffuse it really helps your mind connect to your body because so often at the minute I've been living in my head with all these scattered thoughts and emotions and what's going on and actually it's very helpful to just connect with this beautiful body that's going through everything that it's going through and feel how how am I feeling and again on the heart chakra if you want to although better there resonates more well it resonates with all the chakras really but it it has a very soporific effect it distills your thoughts it calms your thoughts and it allows you to just get some really decent quality sleep it's used shamanically to help you remember your dreams as well um, not that i'm a shaman of any description but i know that it it really helps you to with, with dreams and with recalling them and, and analyzing them and thinking about what am i being shown um, so it, it's it's a beautiful essential oil. It's very grounding, as I say. It's very good for fear. So again, with my diagnosis, I literally went into absolute fear and shock. And it's a great oil for just gathering you together and just saying, hold on a minute, sort of slow down, hang on. So uh, and also for grief. So if there's loss, um, uh, you know, whether it's a career or a, a loved one or, or or anything like that, any loss. Vetiver will really just help keep you together, <laughs> essentially. So I find it really, really useful for, for sleep, for sure. Yeah. Great, Great. thank you. And um, tell me, tell us about another one of your uh, your <laughs> favourite oils. Well, I, I mentioned Pettigrain, 
yeah. um, which was the first essential oil I ever had. My sister bought it for me when I was 18 years old and I'd had my tonsils out and I was a miserable teenager and was feeling really down. And so she bought me this little bottle of Pettigrain and I remember thinking I've never smelled anything like it. It, it didn't smell like a perfume. It smelled like fresh air. It comes from the orange blossom tree, but from the, the leaves and the twigs. So it's slightly woody, but, but, but citrusy at the same time. And it's brilliant for convalescence. Absolutely fantastic. And what I found and I struggled with is that resting is really important, especially when I'm going through all this chemo and treatment. And when I reframe resting as an action, Pettigrain really helps me to think I am actually doing something to help myself here. I'm calming down. I'm having some uh, gentle tranquilization through, through, through Pettigrain and, and I'm convalescing and I'm getting better. I'm healing. I'm helping myself. And the sort of sunny nature of, of Pettigrain uplifts the mood slightly, but not in a shocking way. Not like Yuzu that I mentioned, which is like a blast of sunshine. It's very much more gentle. And one of my absolute obsessions at the moment, I have to mention, is cardamom. I am adoring cardamom. And to me, it's like a bridge. And I mix it either with a citrus if I do want a bit of zip, a bit of motivation, a bit of focus. I've used it tonight ahead of this. <laughs> Just, Laura, gather your thoughts. Focus is fantastic. But if you mix it with one of the, the calmer essential oils, maybe another spice like ginger, the cardamom just gives you that beautiful embrace, that wonderful hug. It's a beautiful blend to burn at home. It's very homely, as you can imagine. It's warm and creamy and silky. And um, oh, it's a digestive in terms of um, physicality. So if you're a bit of a nervous tummy type person, um, it can help on a physiological level like that. But for me, it's just that beautiful, beautiful bridge of a hug. I just love it yeah oh wow it's so interesting yeah cardamom I, I'm, I'm i have to go and order some pettigrain now i've never had pettigrain so I, okay. i've got a serious dose of fomo here <laughs> i need to get some pettigrain <laughs> no seriously it sounds fantastic so you so you like use use them at different times throughout the day the other thing you said at the beginning i didn't know this also is that the easiest and the quickest way to ingest them is through inhaling them rather than through the skin. That's kind of counterintuitive in a way, isn't it? Because you think if you're putting something on your skin, it's going to go into your bloodstream or just kind of, you know, you absorb it much quicker. But the, the in, inhalation um, is, is much more effective. That's really interesting. Well, it, it is, but, it, but then I guess you're inhaling it as you're massaging it into your skin as well. So, yeah. so, so you're kind of doing both. But when you inhale it, whether it's through steam, you know, the old fashioned towel over your head steam, or whether it is just waving a sniffy stick or a tissue under your nose with it, um, it goes directly up your uh, nasal passages to the limbic system. And it's, it's there. It's, it's affecting your brain. It's affecting your central nervous system within moments, really. Whereas with, with the massage, it takes a few minutes just for it to seep through the pores in your skin, through all the layers of the, the epidermis and the dermis, and then into your bloodstream and your lymph and around the system. So, um, you know, yeah, I do like to, I, I do like a good inhale. <laughs> And then through inhalation, you still get that therapeutic benefit that, that you do through skin ingestion as well, I guess, right? Absolutely, you do. Yeah, it's just about getting those gaseous essential oils into your system and uh, it's quicker through, through inhalation. On that point as well, a lot of people will know that... Um, some essential oils can be sensitizing to the skin, particularly if you go out in the sun, the citrus oils are phototoxic, most of them. Um, but they're also phototoxic and sensitizing if you just inhale them. So it's not always about just putting it on your skin. You, you probably want to be a bit cautious at, at, at inhaling them as well if, if you're predisposed to sensitivity. Yeah. Gosh, I had no idea about that. Thank you. That's some really wise words around that. So um, <laughs> even if you inhale them, and you go out into the sun, they could affect you if you have sensitive. Skin. Yeah. It's yeah. so interesting. So interesting. Yeah. So um, I guess it's almost like reframing what we do with oils because we, we associate oils around products, right? And applying them. And um, 
And it's around a ritual, like a bath or a massage or something like that. But what you're saying is use them as um, as, as smellies, you know, to 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 uh, to smell them throughout the day to adjust your mood. And it's so funny as you say this. I um, someone gifted me this tiny little kind of blend of jazz. It was a blend of jasmine, and it was a rollerball. And I, you know, I'll talk about rollerballs in a minute, but. When, um, when COVID first happened and, you know, obviously with, with uh, our business, it was just, it, it was, uh, yeah, it was pretty traumatic for us. Um, yeah. We went through a, quite a traumatic time at the beginning. I remember sitting there with this little jasmine stick and I was putting it here, my third eye, I was putting it here. And I would just calm down and I was kind of doing it automatically without realizing what was going on. But now I look back, I think actually I was just calming down by using that oil constantly throughout the day. So yeah. it should be just part of your self-care routine as you move. It doesn't have to be around a ritual, a bath. I mean, the bath is beautiful, of course, and all of that. But just to constantly apply them or sniff them or yeah, definitely. Uh, throughout the day. I think so. And a lot of them are adaptogenic. I mean, lavender is is, is renowned for being uh, sedative, but it can actually also be uplifting. So the more you use lavender, the more uplifting it is. It's kind of like an arc. So it, it does have sedative properties mostly. But if you overuse it or you use it a lot, it will actually have the opposite effect and it, it will uplift. Um, so, so check in with yourself because everybody's different as well and, and, and sit with your essential oils and really get to know them and think about how are they, how are they making me feel right now? Are they uplifting? Are they calming, et cetera? And, and one of the loveliest things to do is, is the three point anoint, which is just putting it behind your ears, on your heart and on your wrists. And when we can all start embracing each other again and hugging, you've got that beautiful natural scent that you can share, you know, with other people on you. And it's it's just something that you, you can do in the morning instead of using a, a synthetic fragrance just to yeah. adjust your mood. And, you know, they're not they're, they're powerful, but they're subtle. So they're, if you're feeling irritable and d distressed or emotionally fraught, they, they might just turn the dial down a little bit and give you some time. Equally, if you're in the doldrums and you're feeling really sorry for yourself, they might just take the edge off it a little bit and just lift you, lift you for a while. And that's pretty powerful in my book. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Totally agree. And I'm, I shared with Laura uh, last week that I actually stopped. By, I don't buy perfume. I haven't bought it for, for years now. And I use I make my own little rollerball. So you can buy these little um, uh, containers with a rollerball and I put the base oil in and then I just make my own scents and put them and I use that as perfume um, my own perfume and actually you get more you get more comments from that than you do <laughs> buying a commercial perfume off the shelf you know and it's, it's half the price as well <laughs> so um, it's totally, I totally personal right <laughs> Margaret what do how much do you mix with non-perfume shower gel okay I had this um, question also recently from um, a dear friend. So um, it as, was, it's the same as you said, right? Same as before, yeah. So half the amount of drops, I must get yeah. that right, to the mill. So if you've got yeah. 20 ml of shower gel, pop in no more than 10 drops of essential yeah. oil. Yeah, you probably yeah. Um, with with uh, wash off products, you might you might want to be a bit more generous, but be be careful. Have a have a start off low, and then you can always increase, can't you? Yeah, 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 for sure. I use a more um, uh, for morning shower gel. Just give you a little uh, a, a, a little peek into my my bathroom cabinet. Mm -hmm. I use um, peppermint and either wild orange or mandarin mm -hmm. um, and I put a little bit of geranium in there as well oh. and um, for me that's just so uplifting in the morning it kind of wakes me up and it's but yeah you have to play and find what you like oh, I love so it. we you know we're almost at the end of our hour oh, I can't believe it we could talk about this um, forever uh, where can you buy the empty bottles uh, I buy them from Amazon but I'm sure there's other places yeah know. the soap kitchen again um soap near kitchen yeah soap kitchen did you say soap kitchen yeah i, I, I think that on here right. and then we'll put that on the forum as well Neil's oh, my Lord, is that you? um yeah there's yeah you can just google them there's loads of places that do glass is the thing 
um, <laughs> rather than plastic because it will ultimately yeah. eat away at plastic, won't it? So yeah, 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 perfect. So um, oh my gosh, thank you so much. For that. Oh, there was a question about neon. Neon, I, personally, I would put in the same class as uh, aromatherapy associates and um, SPA. Would you? Laura? Yeah, I think I think they're organic. Yeah, they are. Yeah, yeah so that's that's a bonus. Lovely. They're pre-blended, yeah. as far as yeah. I know. So there'll be a mixture of essential oils in there rather than a single note. Yeah. Um. So that's that's lovely. I think they're good quality. Yeah. Yeah. So um, before we close. Laura's going to actually run a course for us on um she's going to do two workshops for us on her on her oil her favorite oils there's 10 oils and we're going to do five per workshop and we're going to get really deep on these oils right we're going to be talking about these oils in detail how you can use them what the properties are um over the next uh well we'll, we'll, we'll put the dates out asap so mm -hmm. is there anything I've missed on that no, I don't think so. I think that's, you know, if, if there's a particular essential oil that somebody wants to cover, I'm sure we can, we can get yeah. them as well. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll put them up. And I think if you do want to, you know, come along to those, um, if you want to put again on the forum or send an email about anything, any, any specific oil you'd like to include, um, let us know. But uh, Laura, thank you so much for, for just actually just being you, <laughs> so lovely, you're so lovely. And, um, and sharing all your lovely experience and your knowledge and, um, you know, gosh, that I, I'm so happy that, you know, these essential oils help you through this time and that you can share that. It's so amazing that you can share that with you, with, oh, with us. Oh, really beautiful, thank you. Um, <laughs> thank you everyone for coming along. As always, beautiful to see you. And um, yeah, we've got some great comments. Um, oat bath, yeah, I can't wait to try the oat bath. Look at it now. And the vetiver, oh yeah, look at that. Oh, I'm really gonna feel like Cleopatra in that bath. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, thanks everybody for coming along and get, see you soon next week. Uh, we'll ad advise you next week. I think we've actually got Jordan back to do some fitness and breath work, energy fitness. So time to get moving again. <laughs> um, but uh, in the meantime, have a wonderful week ahead and uh, see you soon and take care. Lots of love. Bye.